soulless beings might exist out there, hands extended in friendship, awaiting the moment when we humans take our first tentative steps into space. What tales will be told of that glorious day when we are first contacted by our brothers from beyond the stars? Originally released in 2005 for the PlayStation 2 and Xbox, developed by Pandemic Studios and originally published by the late THQ, what you're seeing on screen is the PlayStation 4 PS2 emulated version, which was distributed by Nordic Games, or as they're referring to themselves now as THQ Nordic. Nordic Games, for those who don't know, basically bought up a ton of THQ properties after they went under in 2013. But anyways, the game starts off with a nuclear launch test, when out of the blue a UFO appears to investigate, and is then struck down by said nuclear launch. In the aftermath, the alien life form seemingly dies on the spot, but of course only to send out a distress beacon to the far reaches of space. Afterwards, you play Brave, Strong, Soldier, of the Furon Empire named Cryptosporidium-137, and it's your task to track down Cryptosporidium-136, who crashed in the beginning, and of course, destroy all humans. It's the name of the game, but is the game any good? Let's find out first with the good. Perhaps you're right, 137. Of course I'm right, you kidding me? A Cryptosporidium captured by a bunch of monkeys? We gotta go in. We gotta crack some graniums. We gotta rescue me. Him. He's gotta rescue me. I mean, we gotta... I gotta... Brains, man. When do I get to blow things up? Possibly the best aspect to destroy all humans for me is simply the writing and story. From the witty dialogue between Crypto and Pox... Alright, Crypto. Here's the plan. We're going to use this television thingy ourselves to subjugate humanity to the indomitable will of the Furon Empire! <laughs> to Crypto learning about the human world in general. They eat with their mouths. Ugh, I think I'm going to be violently ill. Destroy All Humans' writing, concept, and plot is absolutely fantastic, not to mention the 1950s settings and themes are also very well executed. On a gameplay perspective, Destroy All Humans is your standard sandbox style of game, with a basic mission structure usually involving destroying certain things in the environment, but aside from that, the game will still throw plenty of unique missions your way, like guiding a nuclear bomb to an airbase without being detected for example. Interestingly enough, Destroy Humans has plenty of stealth within its mission design and structure thanks to the Holobob system, which to sum up lets you disguise yourself as a random human. In order to keep the disguise up, you'll also need to scan people's minds to recharge your abilities. If it becomes empty, for example, the Holobob disguise will drop. At the top of the screen, you'll also notice the game has different notoriety options, ranging from random people being aware of you, to the cops and military, and of course the final one being M for Majestic who are pretty powerful and can also deploy robots, mutant soldiers, and other such things. The Holobob disguise doesn't work on them as well, and if you get too close, they'll notice you and the disguise will drop. But easily the best aspect of the gameplay, however, is the variety of weapons in Crypto's arsenal. Everything from a shock weapon, to a disintegrator weapon, to basically a grenade launcher, and of course, everyone's favorite, anal probe. Not to also forget Crypto's best weapon, his UFO which has a range of weapons from your standard death ray to spinning tanks around like toys to a shock blast like weapon that sends vehicles flying. And of course to a weapon that levels small neighborhoods or a large building. Which brings up easily the next best thing about Destroy All Humans is simply the absolute mayhem you can cause in the sandbox world. From leveling buildings, destroying vehicles, anal probing people, and better yet the game throws in a few different areas and environments for you to do this in. As for the graphical side of things, for a 2005 game, they're a pretty standard affair for a sandbox game on PlayStation 2 and the 6th gen consoles. What I mean by that is, it's nothing exactly too impressive, but not exactly mind-blowing either, considering what else was coming out at the time on new hardware. How the hell am I supposed to keep up with that image? I am such a plain Jane! As for the PS2 emulated version available on PlayStation 4, the upscaling looks solid and is a huge improvement on clarity compared to the PS2 original and it's perfect for anyone with an HDTV setup. However, the game does have its issues. So with that being said, now let's discuss the bad. You shoot like a girl, Vladimir! Come and get me, you comment piece of crap! Okay, we'll do it your way.
On the topic of visuals still, the biggest issue with most sandbox PS2 games was simply the draw distance and popping issues. Destroy All Humans sadly is no different. Going up top of a tall building in the environment, for example, you'll see basically a big grey blob around you in the distance. As for the PlayStation 4, PS2 emulation side of things, I did notice at times whenever you beat a mission, and you did the newspaper segment where it flies at the screen, it had some weird flickering issues. But it's pretty minor stuff. What's not so minor, however, is the game did crash two to three times during my playthrough of it across roughly ten hours. But on a gameplay perspective, easily the most annoying aspect of Destroy All Humans was failing a mission. Perimeter breach CRYPTO! What? You failed the mission! Curse you, pathetic human! For example, if you fail a mission and simply want to restart, you first have to leave the area that you're in by pressing start and returning to the mothership. From there you watch a loading screen, then once it loads you go to the hangar again, select the mission once again, then watch as Crypto once again flies the ship towards the logo of the game. Then from there you watch another loading screen, then of course you get the opening cutscene again, Thankfully you can skip it, and you'll have to once again play the mission from the very start. So as you can probably imagine, this can become very frustrating in more difficult missions. Or in this case, even with things you don't have any control over whatsoever. Which brings up probably my biggest issue and the worst missions in this game. Escort missions. Now keep in mind these are pretty rare, and you only have to do a few of them throughout the entire game. But all of them are awful. The AI controlling the NPCs you have to protect is pretty much brain dead. I found it easier in some instances to just simply use my psychic abilities and carry them back to my ship while running through gunfire and accidentally smashing them into stuff every now and then. But now it's time I give the opinion. Destroy All Humans, despite my complaints, is still an extremely fun and good game. It's easily one of the best sandbox games on the 6th generation of consoles, causing mayhem with Crypto's arsenal is always fun. Then on top of that you have witty dialogue, one-liners, and the writing in general is on point, and the 1950s setting is well done. I'm hoping Destroy All Humans 2 gets re-released as well on the PlayStation 4, as it arguably improves on a number of things, and in my opinion, it's an even better game. But with all that said, now it's time I give.